I just got done recording what I thought was going to be a best to worst list ranking the Star Wars films, all the live action ones. Uh, it didn't turn out to be the case as I was 30 minutes into recording and was still on The Last Jedi. So I've decided to reshoot the whole thing um, because I never made it past The Last Jedi and instead use this footage as a a separate video altogether. Now I know this is nothing new, especially on YouTube, someone to complain about this film. Uh, it might not be for the exact reasons. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not crying about Mary Sue's or anything uh, of that nature. I just don't like it from a normal standpoint. So since you're here and you clearly have the time, why not listen to a grown man once again cry about a, a space opera film? Let's begin. Hey, before I dive in, if you hate The Last Jedi as much as I do, make sure to force push that subscribe button. If you love the film, make sure to push it as well. Just do it a little lighter. Just gonna touch it lightly as a protest touch. All right, let's continue. What is there to really say about The Last Jedi that hasn't been said online about a million times already? Not much. I hate it. How's that for a quick overview? It looks gorgeous. This may be arguably the best looking Star Wars movie full stop ever. It, I, I truly love the design. I love the atmosphere. It's got a darker vibe to it. It's got a somber feel. Ryan Johnson knows how to film a movie. I'll give him props there for sure. The score reflects that really well too. I love the music in this film. The soundtrack's phenomenal. The clothing, the ships, the designs, the porgs. I love me a good porg at the end of the day. I know they're just corporate money grubbing little shits created to sell merch, but I'll buy a porg. In fact, I, my son owns a porg. He has a little stuffed one in his bed. Looks at him every night, haunts him. I know the red room scene, the throne room scene gets a lot of shit about poor choreography. Have you seen the original trilogy? Why we lie to ourselves? There is plenty to criticize in The Last Jedi. We don't need to make shit up or we don't need to harp on things that are clearly apparent in other Star Wars movies. More so even. That fight in, the, in A New Hope, where they're just playing patty cake with the lightsabers and doing little twirls. Uh, Obi-Wan's like, huh, oh, uh, oh. Don't you wish your Jedi was hot like me? Don't you wish your Sith was a Jedi like me? Don't you? Plus we got Daisy Ridley rocking that gray ensemble. Just, just gorgeous. Love it. Love everything about it. We have to take a couple steps back and talk about The Force Awakens. A film that I defended. A film that I slit my wrist to, opened them up and said, I'm here, man. I'm with you, J.J. Abrams, to the very end. I was online saying, what are you talking about, Mary Sue? I never even heard this stupid term before. What are you assholes going on about? Oh, she's perfect with the Force. She already knows Jedi tricks with no training. She knows how to fly a Millennium Falcon and fix it better than fucking Harrison Ford does. Who cares? There's something going on behind the scenes. This is the first film of a new trilogy. Let it have time to breathe. Let it have time to grow. This is Disney. They have a plan. These are the guys that brought us the MCU. That that clearly had goals in mind. It was it, it was set up step by step along the way. They're not just gonna wing this thing. They have a plan. They have a plan. <laughs> I put out several videos. I'll be an apologist. Saying, just wait, you shit. You don't know anything about the next film. You don't know anything about what the future holds. Rey is most likely the daughter of Luke. She could have been Jedi Force wiped, for all we know. She was left on a planet to fend for herself. We don't know the reasons why. Maybe the Sith is hunting down her father and mother, who we've never met yet. I can't wait to meet Luke's wife. I'm sure she's just a treasure. We don't meet her. We don't even meet Luke, as far as I'm concerned. There's so much potential here. So let's talk about A Force Awakens. It built up a very similar premise to A New Hope. You could argue it was a carbon copy and you wouldn't be entirely wrong, but it's a playbook that worked, you know, like a million years ago. Let's bring it back for a new audience. Let's bring those familiars in that maybe didn't like the prequels so much like myself. Let's win them over here. Let's say, guess what? We're back to the basics. You know this story. We're doing it again for a new gen. We're gonna bring back the old reliables. 
Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, R2-D2, C-3PO, and then we're not gonna use them at all! We're gonna treat them like second-hand characters. We're gonna treat them at this point like they're an old retired person that needs to be put in a home and ignored for the later part of their years because they're useless to us now. We have to think about the future. J.J. Abrams delivered Ryan Johnson the easiest goddamn layup on the planet. Here's the ball. I set the hoop to uh, three feet. So you just walk up, drop the ball right down in there. Or, or dunk it if you want. And do a victory lap around the court. Wave to the audience as you go by. Blow, blow some kisses to the ladies. They're going to love you after this. We have some intrigue. The Force is calling out to this new young Jedi girl. Specifically, Luke's lightsaber that some weird little orange alien chick has and says it's a story for another time. A story we're never going to hear! Luke has gone into hiding. There's a secret map that's so important and precious to stay out of the hands of the new Empire. Rebuilt. Rebranded. The First Order. Or the New Order. I don't know anymore. I don't care anymore. There's a new mysterious Palpatine type figure behind the scenes pulling the strings. Was he Palpatine's master this whole time? Is it Palpatine reincarnate? The evil emperor? In a new shell of sorts? Are we gonna get some cool flashback to Return of the Jedi where we find out a distress beacon is sent out to Snoke and maybe even a couple more dark Sith Lords? I know there's some shit about one master, one apprentice thing that was brought into the prequels. I believe my knowledge is a little sketch on that. Who, so what? Change it. We change stuff all the time. I don't care about that. That, that that's like such a dumb thing too. That's lame. No, forget all that though. Forget all the things that you think would have been cool. Uh, Ryan Johnson had other plans. Now, there is an argument that I've heard after this movie came out that just boggles my mind. And that is, you weren't happy with the film because it didn't go where you wanted it to. Or your headcanon was different. So therefore, you're wrong. What? When has it been set in stone that you can't have a better idea for a film? Or where is it set in stone that you you don't have to like the way a film was written. Are we now defending films like Fifty Shades of Grey or Twilight? Because when I look at those movies, I think to myself, man, there was a thousand better ways I could have wrote this. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, I would be disappointed if you didn't come to that conclusion at one point or another when watching a movie. Like critically thinking about a film's plot and going, you know what? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. Why didn't they do this instead? Instead of mindlessly watching a film and digesting whatever they put on the screen. Art is subjective after all. You don't have to like the same painting someone else does. You shouldn't like the same painting someone else does just because you're told to. Or because the score on Rotten Tomatoes is high. What The Last Jedi essentially boils down to is a slow moving space chase for a few days. It, it doesn't push the story forward at all. Outside of we find out that Luke is useless and doesn't have anything to do with the franchise really. Outside of, he was a failure as a teacher and he kind of turned his back on the force. There's some interesting ideas there, don't get me wrong. The, the whole like throw out the Jedi scripts or the Bibles or whatever, it's all BS written by a bunch of idiots that don't know anything or, or they, they thought they knew but they were arrogant. Okay, cool, let's, let's go into that a little bit more. Oh no, we're not going to? Okay, fine. Usually when a hero or a protagonist comes to that conclusion though, they don't just throw it all away and then give up or make one final sacrifice, one last hurrah and call it a day. They usually forge their own path and try to do things the right way instead of moping and hiding for 30 years on a rock before you die on the damn thing alone. Hey, but Luke did do something. He gave those rebels a chance to escape. He bought them all of, I'd say 25 seconds extra. To, to go run into the back of the cave where Ray was conveniently on the other side, force pulling the rocks up so they could get out. I don't think they needed Luke at all. I'm pretty sure Ray moves those rocks. She she runs inside and says, hey guys, we can get out this way. I mean, I don't think he did shit. I don't dislike The Last Jedi though just because Luke was mishandled. Okay, fine, he was mishandled. I don't like The Last Jedi for a myriad of reasons. One, the tone is all over. At some points it's dark and cool and mysterious and at others you're like out of a shitty Harry Potter film. And I love Harry Potter. This is a shitty Harry Potter film that it was never made until Last Jedi where they're in this casino planet jumping on cars running away on these 
awfully rendered horse things. You got Broomstick Boy doing the forest, which I don't believe goes anywhere. That's how the film ends. The, like the forest is awakening in people, which was the title of the last one, but they're awakening now. And then I don't, that, that doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere. Almost every single character is mishandled in this. Ray has no growth as a character because she was already seemingly perfect before. She, she had some parenting baggage to get over, but that really didn't seem to hinder her in any sort of respect. Kylo Ren's the only cool character in this whole goddamn thing because he's got some conflict, uh, even though it's conflict we'd already previously seen in the prequel films. Albeit, I think Adam Driver is a much better actor. No, no disrespect to Hayden Christensen, but I, I, maybe it's just because Driver had better, you know, lines to work with and scene direction. Something Lucas isn't the, the most uh, equipped to handle. We have Princess Leia, though. Mary poppins in through space, supermanning back to a ship. Looked atrocious. Made no sense. She has Force Resurrection abilities. How? I thought it was cool that she was a trained Jedi like off screen and they did that awesome flashback in the in the final installment which I loved but they don't do anything with it. She's like I'm going to use the force like two times in this film and it's going to be pretty useless. Like the first time is just to save myself and then the second time is to say goodbye to my stupid brother. Poe becomes absolute trash in this one, just a cocksure idiot to get some of his platoon killed. For some reason, the upper management is keeping secrets from him. I don't know why. It makes no sense. They're trying to teach him a lesson when they have a squadron of like 50 people left. Yeah, now's the time to start teaching lessons about being a leader. You know what? Maybe don't keep one of your main lieutenants in the dark about what your plans are, especially when it makes no sense. Then we have good old Finn, the stormtrooper who couldn't. What happened? He was also great in A Force Awakens. Some terrific chemistry with him and Daisy Ridley going back and forth. And then they just sideline this guy and put in Rose Tico for some stupid love story arc that goes absolutely nowhere like most of the new setups in this film. The stuff that was previously set up, thrown away. New stuff is introduced and goes nowhere in the next movie because you have two directors who supposedly were working together and chatting making their own movies that don't add up to a cohesive trilogy. And then they have the gall to do these interviews pretending like it was all in the plans. And then they do separate interviews later saying, no, we never talked. And then later interviews saying, oh yeah, we were in constant communication. What the fuck? The movie is also a chore to get through. It's incredibly long. Just pacing wise, it feels miserable to sit through, even though it looks so pretty and it has visually stunning sequences outside of the Mary Poppins stuff. I just don't care. I don't want to watch it. It's a miserable watch. Maybe a couple more Porg scenes and I'm invested again, but no, they're not in it that much either. Not enough. Not enough. The final battle on Planet Salt is so incredibly stupid, I can't even comprehend it. They're, they're flying these little skiff planes or whatever, just, just absolute piles of shit. And you have this massive army they're going against with state of the, you know, Top of the line weaponry, just blasting these things. And out of nowhere, Rose Tico sideswipes Finn, sits down with the guy and's confessing her love to him while the entire First Order's looking at them like, brah, should we shoot them? But then they see who it is and they're like, nah, let's not even waste a laser on them. Do, do lasers run out? Apparently fuel does in this film. That's new. But I, I don't know. I don't even think they'll waste a never-ending laser on them. That's how pathetic Finn and Rose are. All right, so at the end of the day, the Rebels escape the planet. At least we still have Snoke to deal with, you know? It's not just going to be some lame Rey versus Kylo thing. Uh, oh, no, they kill Snoke. Snoke's dead. He's not coming back. The big new bad is just Kylo Ren. The whiny, kind of unsure, spoiled little brat that will probably turn out to be good in the end anyways. Or at least, you know, make the right decision at the end. Just like, you know, Darth Vader did. Sweet. Alright, so that was my bitch fest of The Last Jedi. I didn't know it was going to go this direction, but I guess I should have. I should have known myself by now. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about the film. Has it become the next Empire Strikes Back for you? Like people have been saying for years online that it's going to be the next Empire Strikes Back and we just are stupid and don't see it? Or is it still a shitty film that you don't ever want to watch or think about it again? 
like myself. Leave a comment if you haven't, like the video if you want to, and make sure to subscribe though. I put out a lot of new movie content every day at this point. So hopefully I'll see you around. May the force be with you. Wow, what a ride. It certainly took a turn, didn't it? Um, I'm not one with the force, but if I could, join me on Patreon and give me a dollar or five dollars a month, show your support, or join right here on YouTube for the same. You get an exclusive access. An exclusive access, that's good English. You get exclusive access to a show called The Cringe I do once a month. It's satirical, it's, it's just meant to make you laugh. Um, I would love the support though, most of all. It really keeps the lights on, on the show. So, again, join me, J -j join. It's like a fly in here.